Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm continuing with building up my scene around my beehive. So the beehive's all done. I've ironed it to get rid of the red lines. I'll probably iron it a little bit more because I can still see a faint red line there. So now I just wanna create some flowers around it. Now, I don't wanna take the easy path and just embroider it that's sort of not the style of this piece i want to make it quite textured and three-dimensional so what i'm thinking of doing is i've got some scraps of fabric here and i'm thinking about oh, i've used that one already on the arch maybe that one let's have a look some gray right there is pinned I don't know why that's pinned that's a piece I haven't yet included that has potential um, okay so yeah it's just a case of what I do with these little flowers so this lot over here according to the design they were like a lazy daisy stitch with a French knot in the middle and I don't think I'm gonna do that I think I want it to be more textured so what did I do with my scissors? For goodness sakes. These ones will have to do. Okay, so I'm thinking, thinking of using a bit of this chiffon fabric. Um, I could cut out some of those, but I think they're a bit too blendy to the background. So I don't think I can use those that away I could put grey flowers in there but I don't know they're too small I keep coming back to this chiffon and maybe I make so what am I going to do there I've got two big features I wonder if I could stitch one of those on let's just cut this little guy out. Maybe we can use one of those. Because there's only two. And if I blend, blend in a stem. Yeah, I don't mind that. I could put some French knots in the center. There's a second bud. Do I do a smaller bud? Or do I cut out another big one? Um, I'm going to cut out the smaller of the buds and see if that looks any good if that doesn't look right i'll do a second big one maybe i could do little buds over there i just need to get rid of a little bit more of the red that's interfering with it so that you just see the flower yeah, I don't mind that. Maybe, maybe I continue this idea actually over here. They would pop. Okay, let's, let's cut out another one. I wonder if there was another fabric in this series that used this design in a different color. because there's a leaf, there's a leaf here as well. Let's have a look at this guy. I could take him right up. So that sort of blends that with that. Um, I'm just looking at my piece. See, there's a different flower again there. 
I might evil this guy out. I don't think I want a third flower. And I do want to play with the um, this fabric here because I did use it in some flowers at the very beginning of the project. So it would be nice to have I sort of feel like that wants to go over that way, the way the wind is blowing it. Now this stuff, what will we do? I'm thinking maybe I cut a little square I don't know if this will work but we'll give it a go and we pinch it in and then stitch it down and then that'll create yeah that'll work okay needle and thread let's get this little shape formed with a few little stitches to secure it. And then we could have those popping up in front of those. So this side's a little bit more dense. Do I bend it in? Yeah. Like a, like a piece of fabric, a uh, piece of um, what do they call it? Oh, it goes around your flowers, your bunch of flowers. Cello. So wrapping paper, like a piece of wrapping paper that goes around the bunch of flowers. You know that shape that you get. That's what I'm going for. So I'm just going to put a couple little stitches to maybe hold that shape for me. And then I can come over it with... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that feels like a bit of a, a flower. So I'll just knot that off. So it's nice and secure. And then I'm thinking, put one there. I'll just stitch him on, I think. Because I'm happy with that. So I had said, I think, in the other video of this beehive that I would be embroidering, but when I picked the piece back up, I sort of looked at it again and I'm like, hang on a minute, there's not a lot of embroidery here. It's all about collaging. So we, having said that, I was like, excellent. I get to have a little play. I'm just going to place a stitch up in the throat of that flower. It'll be covered in with beads and, you know, things like that. I might just bring my needle down here and cut another one. Another little square. And I can put some little pistol stitches out of there or something along those lines. Try and make this one a little bit smaller. It's getting pretty fiddly. Very fiddly. So I might just grab a new thread on the needle so that I can get the base secure. And just tuck it in, try and create that feeling that it's a wrap around flowers. Okay, so let's just knot that off. And I'll pick 
take up the thread that I left here and stitch him down as well. Second little flower. Okay, that's good. I like that. I'm just going to pinch down one side. And then the other side can sort of stay open a little bit so that I can get. Having said that, I think I will stitch it down. Oh, because it was getting a bit big. Here we go, just a little something, something. Now, I could probably do with another one. Let's cut another little square. Could get it in the front of front of the little post won't be a bad thing. It'll sort of feel like it's in the foreground. So grabbing my second thread again, the one that's not attached to the piece, and I've given it a little bit more of a shape down this way. So I wanna just have an experiment with a longer throat. I can trim it off then to say that it is actually a smaller flower, but at least I've got that little bit extra fabric to play with while I got it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So I'm just going to knot that off. Okay, pick up my thread attached to the panel. Now, where am I going to put this little guy? And I think I can trim him now. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So I'm going to come in underneath him and just catch him with that needle. It's very fiddly, but it should work. If I wanted to, I could probably add some stamens to them. You know those ones that you buy from haberdasheries that have the little bobble at the top and they've got a wire to them, but sort of don't want anything too harsh on the panel itself like wire. So I think I'll just do some little pistol knots in there. Just got to get him secure. It's very fiddly. Some nice little tulipy little Let me just get a little stitch in the back there and that'll hold him. It's fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Okay, let's get that little stitch secure. Okay. I won't bore you with overcast stitch on those fabric flowers that are pre-printed. 
what I might do so that I don't have pins in my way because there's a bit of work to do here I might use some of the fabric glue just to anchor them down so they don't fray I'm just going to nibble out a little bit more red so that they are a cleaner look and I'm just going to put a little bit of art glitter glue around that edge not only will it attach it to my panel just but it'll just stop the fraying because I've trimmed so much of the fabric off of this little flower it's very very close to the the red of the flower so let's get him nestled in there And that'll just sit there until I'm ready to stitch it. They nearly look like thistles. Just gonna get that little bit of red out of there. Probably being finicky, but it's those little smooshes of colour that I see. And it just makes your design look so much cleaner if they're gone. Okay. really have my tweezers is tiny 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 so we'll give him a bit of a, a swish that way so he can be over the green a little bit from up there I think that'll sort of blend it a little bit okay that's pretty good now this guy give him a little trim So I'm not sure if I mentioned as soon as this video started, you will be watching this the day I'm on the boat. I'm boarding as we speak. So luckily I managed to get one more video made finishing this piece. So what I'll do is when I've finished filming this hour, I'll finish stitching because we would have nutted out the plan of attack for all of these elements. And then I'll pop a photo at the end and I'm pretty much have, I'm gonna leave room for the B. I've pretty much got all of the Roxy pieces to a point of when I come back, away we go again. So I'm happy with that. There'll be, a, a, like I said, a photo at the end with it all finished. And you would have seen by now my Percy the Peacock, who's going with me. So he should be a bit of fun. Okay, so we've got our feature flowers here. This here, we might just do some pistol stitches, like something, whether we, I don't know, whether we come up with something different, I don't know. Let's have a... Let's have a play. Maybe, no, we can't use that because it's, it's, let me come up a bit in the camera. We can't use that because it's that and that's very similar. So if I do, I think I can put that away. Do I need one more? No. See, I had visions of bringing in couple of these little guys but um, I sort of feel like they were lost what else could we put in there I need something else just looking through my green fabrics that's all the pumpkin colors what else do we have here in my box of tricks from this project 
Oh, what's that? That's this colour. Maybe. Maybe just some little white flowers. Let me just cut out this guy. If you don't like it, there's three just there. So I'm going to go around them. These are over on the side of the gate. Just a little, little bunch of them there. So it probably wouldn't hurt if they did pop up again somewhere. So let's just cut these three out and see if they they fit. It's a fine line there between them. They're pretty much printed nearly on top of each other on that fabric. Won't hurt that there's not a lot of green fabric behind them. And this one as well. Okay. We're mixing in there with all of those guys. I like it that it's busy looking. But it will limit what I can do on the stems. So I don't think I like that. I'm thinking they might be better over here. Tighten the design up a little bit and bring them in. It's okay to have them down to probably that point. Because I sort of want a garden down here plus up here so it looks like there's a bit of a slope. Yeah, I don't mind that. And then maybe I just do soft embroidery pieces in there like stitches. I'm going to put them down. It's just the same system, a little bit of, just to hold them. And then I'll put a bead and French knot in the center of them just to finish those centers off. Now, leaves. Okay, so there's our feature flowers so far. What to do with a stopper? There we go. Now I want to do something three-dimensional with these these leaves up here, and even those. I wonder if I could cut a little. Um, as I've cut down this end where I've been just a little leaf like so just to give those flowers a little bit of dimension as well need a couple more for the other side. Sort of 
helps that area, lifts it a little bit. That's a very big leaf. So I need to do that leaf onto there. And then a small little leaf. onto that one, just a little one. Okay, so we've got some little hints of leaves there. I do want to do something up the top, but I need a different green. Um, that one's in my stash. That one's in my stash. I think they're probably too small. This one I used around the arch. That's those. So maybe, maybe that popping up here is not a bad thing either. Mm. Now we're cooking. I'm just going to grab a bit of this fabric. So that I don't have this big piece flipping and flopping around. Now, let's have a go at doing some little little leaves. And all I did for the vine was I just did a stem stitch up into the center. Come down with the, the stem or the branch and then into the leaf just a little line. It was quite effective. I was pretty happy with the way that that came together. I wish I had my sharp scissors here. They're sitting on my couch because I stitched the beehive and then Left them behind. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. So that will come together. Very similar to the... the I'm concentrating, so I'm flat out finishing my sentences. If I had nice pointy little scissors. Okay, so I might leave that for a second. Now the other thing I want to do is grab my cheesecloth, which I packed away. So I'm just gonna jump up and grab it because I wanna lay some cheesecloth in there. <clears throat> and mixed up in the cheesecloth was that piece of lace. So that piece of crocheting, so I've grabbed it out because I'm wondering Did you hear that door open? Fudge. Just want to trim this back. It's been flicking around my desk, this little morsel. And fudgy. Now, now. And I'm just wondering if I can include it. It's probably a bit big. It's sort of overpowering. It looks. I'm just going to. Yeah, no, nah, it's gone. It's gone. Hello, Pussycat. So I just want to do the usual, create some ground. Oh. I've got to stop this video and go and get my scissors. So I'm just going to hit pause and I'll be back in a moment. Won't be a tick. Okay, I'm back. And I've got my little scissors. So I also picked up the green, the green, um, um, cloth so I'm just going to cut a little bit of the background out first oh even they don't feel sharp what is going on <sighs> boy oh boy what's going on I know cheesecloth's not the easiest of things to cut but fudgy 
I'm just going to just need to cut that a bit so that can come through there and this bit through there so that's our typical ground I'll just put a little bit of green in amongst it because I like it. Fudgy, what is your story? Who wants lap time? Everything revolves around the fudge. So yeah, I like that. Now we might just take a little bit of green. Yes, Fudgy. Down here. Pussy, what are you doing? Just stay out of everything. Pussy cat. So we've got three zones as we're coming down the ridge towards the front gate. Is what I'm attempting to create. Like seriously, that's just like threads. That's no good to me. Just a little bit more of a softening. Okay, so that'll just be stitched down with the invisible stitch like I do. And then I'll just come through with the usual little seed beads and things like I did up under her, her toes up there. Now, the question is the stems. I think that'll be pretty simple because I've use plenty of the greens that I've got here so I can do you know a mix of threads to get me the stems so that should be okay oh that's fudge he trying to get out the door I might use like a dark pink for those but they that should all work Okay, I'm just going to, now using my little sharp scissors, just tighten up these shapes a little bit. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the art glitter glue to hold all those little leaves into position. Just a little bit. Doesn't need much. It just saves me putting all those pins in. So hopefully, by, while you're watching this, I will be having my first pina colada. Yep, that would be my favourite drink. Pineapple. Pineapple juice and coconut. Cream. I first find it so refreshing. I usually only have the one cocktail a day. Otherwise, I, you know, I could fill up on cocktails and you sort of don't eat a proper meal then there's only so much you can eat and drink on these cruises so you've got to be reasonable so I just limit it to the one a day if I had a second one it would be late at night and I'd look for more of those dessert type cocktails the one that I do like as a potential dessert cocktail is a Toblerone cocktail it's really yummy but it does tend to give me a big a bit of a sugar rush therefore I can't sleep so it's sort of a catch-22 but if we're seeing a show or something after dinner I would go to that show with a um, Toblerone in my mitts and it's like um, oh can I remember the ingredients it's got Bailey's it's got a um, hazelnut liqueur so you get that nutty nougat sort of flavor 
and then they put a dob of honey in the bottom of the glass before they mix the actual drink into it. So your straw sort of sits around this dob of honey in the bottom. And as for the rest of the drink, I cannot remember. I did come back from a cruise years ago, fallen in love with the Midori Splice, which is that green Midori. Um, gosh, I've got to think now because I got all the recipes and was making them whenever my mate come over, Marianne, we'd have a Midori Splice or for dessert, we'd make everyone a Toblerone cocktail. But I haven't done it for ages because it's sort of, you know, you go through phases, don't you? I sort of got sick of them too, to be honest. But the old pina colada is a good one, especially when you're hot and you just want a, a cool, refreshing drink. So if I'm out for dinner and Marianne and I decide that we're in need of a cocktail, that, that'd be the one we'd go to every time. I was doing fruit tingles for a bit. They're based on lemonade, but they get sickly and they're blue, so it can't be good. They're blue. <laughs> And lemonade. I don't know what's all in them. I did make them a couple times at home, but uh, they're too sweet. So probably pina colada and a Toblerone cocktail would be my pick. If I was to do two in a day, that's be the two. But they get so expensive on those cruises. You sort of got to be careful you get to the end of the cruise and you've got thousands of dollars racked up well that's a bit of a bummer and they're like you know a $15 drink my glue is oozing beside me due to the warmth in the room because it's mid-afternoon when I'm filming so my art glitter glue bottle is oozing So, yeah, that's what I'll be doing. Having my first drink, I can't wait. Like, I, I just need a break. I honestly do. I feel like I've been pulled from pillar to post in the last week. Hubby's back is much, much better. But, boy, I would say if he was to bend a certain way, it probably would spasm again. It doesn't look like he's aggravated an old injury or anything it just looks like it was a I might do that little leaf back up over the post of the potting shed yeah it just looks like it was a spasm and after a few days of just taking it easy it has settled down thank goodness but I still don't know how he would go having a day on his feet walking around I don't think so I think we're gonna have to be very careful it's a bit of a shame but there's not much you can do when these things happen just gotta go with the flow okay good that's real good just a little bit just another way of pinning your fabrics down without the pins I might just can I get another leaf in there at the top how would that go to come around so then yeah I can I'll do a, just a little guy
Okay, and that there, that can connect into that branch. That leaf will go to the bottom. Okay, now I just need some little leaves over here. So there won't be anything real tricky, I don't think, in the stems. It'll just be the usual. So I don't think you're going to miss much there. I'll just connect them all to the ground. And then, like I said, I will just use some little seed beads to thicken up the ground around them so that they... I just pop a pin there actually because that's gonna I can just see I'm gonna hop up as it is I think there was a piece of cheesecloth yeah there was I'm just gonna pin that already I'm walking away with it that's good really happy with the way things are nestling in to the piece considering it's not in proportion really but it sort of is holding its own logic wise if it makes sense it sort of does work and I think it's probably because we've got a theme so the girl's giving us a theme. Oh my goodness, I've got more glue on my fingers than I do on the actual fabric. Come on, get that little guy down there. How many more? Three more. Oh, and then there's the little bumblebee. I can stitch him in. He'll be pretty easy. Okay. I wonder what the next prompts are. Maybe I'm, see, I'm filming this before I go. I have been considering taking this piece with me, but I'm concerned that I have plenty of time on my hands and I really get into it and I'm going to regret it because there's still plenty to do on it. So I'm th really thinking I should be leaving my Roxy creations, my Roxy projects at home because it could get out of hand. <laughs> I'd rather go over time at the end of the six months catching up I think then get ahead of myself and then be regretting that I've stitched where I could have put something okay I could just see myself camphor stitching this whole thing and then regretting it because there's now stitching where I want to put a prompt if you know what I mean so I think it's best I just Leave it at home. I think I need one more one more leaf. That tiny little piece of fabric has just given me heaps. Now I've lost it. Where is? There it is. Okay, let's trim that. So 
Okay, the nice little leaf. Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad we don't have to do too many more because my fingers are a mess. Let's get the glue, the pin back in the glue. Okay. I think that's, that's pretty good. Alrighty. What will we do next? I'm thinking I'm going to i to get this glue off my fingers is what I've got to do. Um, I might stitch down the cheesecloth because then I can get rid of those two pins. Because this um, beehive is in the middle of my panel, I'm finding I'm having to come in and scrunch up the fabric so that I can, um, you know, embroider and having pins is really unpleasant so what I'm going to do is just pop a few stitches through all of this and getting rid of those pins and that way I can then just go for it stitch my stems in and my pebbles Maybe a few little grassy sprigs around just to soften it all because at the moment it's very um, simplistic. So we can certainly work on that a little bit more. I might even make the the branches or the stems of those little pink tulipy flowers in a chocolatey color or a brown so they're more like stick stems like they're like a magnolia you know the branch is actually brown not green just to break it up a little bit instead of having just all green stems so i'm just gonna scoot through now from that side over to here, get rid of that pin and stitch this down. That's good, it sort of feels like it's a little bit more in keeping with the rest of my piece because I have collaged again. This is very much Oops, slow down, girl. Very much a collaged mishmash of textiles to create this panel and then stitching in amongst it. That's good. Okay, that's holding enough. And I'm just going to scoot down here. And catch this little bit. Lovely. So all my foundation is in. Now it's just a case of adding some detail and I will pick some threads to add to my little needle box here like I usually do. Flimsy there, I can feel it. Hmm. 
that's better. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so I'll just get rid of these fabrics. Flip it over and knot that off. Okay, so now I'll need I'll just stack my little needle box with what I need to do the job. I won't need any of those creams. I won't need that. Okay, I'll put in that thread to pin things down, like overcast around all the flowers. Um, definitely going to use that green I think it'll give it a bit of vibrancy now the, st the stem what did I use over here let me grab my box of there's a bit of brown in here I used yeah here we go that guy that's in there so that will be in there then there's a green that connects yep there's that one Yep, that's it. So that'll connect all of those branches together on the top there. I will probably use a brown down here on this guy too. I think I sort of want to make it very neutral. So that's fine. Now the actual bright green, that'll go on those, I think. So that'll work. And these guys, I'll probably just match this because it is to the colour. Oh, that's a different colour on there than is there. Yeah, I'll probably use that. No, it's too green. I don't like that. Nope. What thread is that from? might just think about that because that might be too bright. Put them both in. So I have a random green thread. That's come from somewhere that is the perfect match for those leaves. So let me have a little look in here. Maybe Mr. Green. Oh, here we go. That's him there. Is that him? Yeah. That's a bit of green for those red flowers and those green leaves. So that is the one we want. And that'll be a case of stitching it right up into the throat of that flower to connect it. Let me zoom in. See what I mean? I'll be bringing the stitch right up into the actual flower. So that'll work. Now the only other thing I need to add um, to my box of tricks is some beads that we usually use. I'll just come back up to match so I need my little calico ones. I keep it quite neutral. I'll bring a bit of the green in. And maybe some little, little flowers to go through. So that will work. Okay. Right. I think that is it. I think we've got everything I need to finish that area off. Uh, black. The bee, the little bee. So we need some black thread for him and some yellow. Oh, that's going to stand out, isn't it? Hmm. Maybe it'll just be the tiniest amount. See, it's such, so stark. Okay, I'll keep it with me, but I will probably need to just break that down into like literally 
two little things. Yeah, that'll be all right. I'm looking at it in its mass, which is way too much. But if I break that down into two little threads and then bury it in there, no, nah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Um, the other thing I'll do is stitch the word words on my sign. That'll finish that. And then I'll do those bees up there. So that pretty much concludes that prompt of the potting shed and the pots. And I've added a little beehive into the seam. Okay. All right, guys. That's great. That set me up for an afternoon of stitching. That's fantastic. All right, guys, I will leave you alone now. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will be enjoying my day. I hopefully will be on a very big boat bobbing along the ocean, making my way to New Zealand. So stay tuned. If you don't hear from me for the next, well, the cruise is 13 days. If you don't hear from me, it was just all too hard technology-wise to get something to you. I'll catch up with you when I get back. But you will have Henrik each week and you will have the Susanna actually no you won't have Susanna prompts because I ended up doing the English paper piecing and you've already watched that video I believe have you no I moved it that's right instead of having you watch it last week I've moved it to the 18th so Saturday the 18th so I'll be on the boat on the Tuesday you will see Henrik on the Friday. You'll see the English paper piecing piece on the Saturday. The following week, it's just Henrik, unless I pop up with something for you due to my abilities to connect to the internet. Other than that, I then come back on the 27th. If I'm still caught up in the middle of who knows what, because I get off the boat on the 27th. I have Henrik number five ready for you there. But um, we'll see. We will see. Even if I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Who knows? I'm going to have a holiday. That's what I'm going to have. All right, guys. Look after yourselves and I will see you when I get back. If not sooner, we'll see. All right, guys. Bye for now.